communist Egyptian militant, a former doctor called Ayman al-Zawahiri. كانت هذه حقيقة 1987 محطة ثانية انتقالية للشيخ أسامة التأثير الملحوظ للفكر المتشدد في تنظيم القاعدة بدأ من التصاق المصريين الذين كانوا وراء فكرة تأسيس التنظيم المصريين كانوا هم وراء فكرة تأسيس التنظيم في سنة 1987 أقول تحديدا الأشخاص هذا ليس طبعا أيمن الظواهر في ذلك الوقت بعيد تمام البعد عن الشيخ أسامة بلادن غير موجود يعني غائب تماما أما أنا ما من أقصد بتأسيس التنظيم إنما هو أبو عبيدة رحمه الله الذي قتل أثناء عودته من كينيا إلى السودان في النهر لما انقلب في انقلب فيهم الزورق أبو عبيدة البنشيري كان يلقب هكذا نسبة لأنه أول جبهة زارها كانت جبهة بنشير عند أحمد شاه مسعود رحمهم الله فأبو عبيد البنشيري أبو حفص المصري وسيف العدل هذه الشخصيات الثلاث البارزة. بن لادن was um, clearly the messenger. He was the the one who was cast as the leader, the one who was pushed up front to do the talking. But uh, looking back on that experience, and I've thought about it many times, uh, I spent more time with uh, Dr. Zawahiri than I did with Osama bin Laden. He wanted to know what type of questions would be asked. He wanted to know what areas would be covered. He wanted to know what program it would be on and for how long. He wanted to know what kind of shots we needed to go with the story. And clearly, he had a lot to do with formulating the message. I think if there is, um, if there is a mindset behind bin Laden that helps formulate his, his message and his approach to delivering that message, it's probably Zawahiri. November 1988, Benazir Bhutto won elections in Pakistan and became the country's first female prime minister. The election was a blow to the Arabs in neighboring Afghanistan, who had lost an ally in Pakistan's previous ruler, General Zia al Haq. Bhutto's Pakistan began to look with concern at the Arab fighters next door particularly once Russian troops had fully withdrawn from Afghanistan by early 1989. Accusations continue to this day that bin Laden supported Pakistani politician Nawaz Sharif in a bid to topple the Bhutto government at that time. A former Pakistani intelligence official who knew bin Laden well told Al Jazeera that Sharif received financial support from bin Laden, among others. One thing I tell you, today Mr. Nawaz Sharif refuses that he ever met Osama or he ever got any support from Osama. This is bad. He was a person who would always ask me, where is my benefactor? I would like to salute him. It was sometime Osama's money, sometime money came from outside and the maximum money ultimately came from the governments. It came from government of Saudi Arabia, it came from government of UAE, it came from other governments also. الذي أنا أعرف شخصيا أنه حدث بسبب أن هناك كان صديق مشترك لبن لادن ونواز شريف وهو أحد الإخوة خالد خواجة الذي قد اشتغل في السابق في جهاز الاستخبارات الباكستاني. وهو طبعا كان من الداعمين للجهاد الافغاني ضد القوات السوفيتيه وايضا كان بالاتصال الوثيق مع بن لادن فحينما تعرض بعض المجاهدين العرب في بشاور بعض المضايقات من الاجهزه الباكستانيه في حكومه بنزير الاولى فهو اقترح على بن لادن ان يدعم نواز شريف الذي كان زعيم المعارضة يعني في آنذاك لإسقاط حكومة بنزير بوتو. When General Zia was killed, the Pakistani security agencies started arresting them. That was the problem, and Sheikh Osama bin Laden wanted to resolve this problem. He wanted some help, and but he nobody was ready to help him. Some people contacted him and they said that actually this is Benazir Bhutto's government which is creating problems 
and if you want uh, the solution of your problem uh, so uh, a new government can solve your problem so you must uh, support us so sheikh usama bin laden asked some pakistani uh, religious scholars some ulama to support nawaz sharif and according to my information nawaz sharif also met him Bin Laden left Afghanistan and the escalating civil war there following the Soviet withdrawal. He later emerged in Sudan after slipping out of Saudi Arabia. In Khartoum, leading Islamist ideologue Hassan Turabi had recently taken power and was offering protection to a variety of Islamic militant groups. Bin Laden contributed generously to the country that had announced its adherence to Sharia law. Among other things, he farmed and built a road as a goodwill gesture. His work won him many admirers among the Sudanese people. They call him Sheikh Bin Laden. They call him Sheikh Bin Laden. So many of us in the country know that he is very good. But the halal is here. They were hoping that the people who were in the country were in the country. بيحسن لهم احسان الواحد ما يستغرب فيهم والله الظاهر اللي قروش انا قلت بجيبه بنوي اي مسكين يجي يديه والله مش مسكين تدي ال 5 ودي ال 10 والله فواحد يدي له 50 جي الف 20 و15 دي الطريقه انا شفتها عنده بس ده ما كل ما اعرفه عن الشيخ بلادين انا اي ميت هيم اونلي تويس اند بوث تايمز ان السودان هي واز لوجد ان خرطوم باك ان 93 ديسمبر Osama was building roads there, he was involved in agricultural activities. He was trying to economically build up Sudan, uh, that is. And uh, he had uh, created certain structures also by way of infrastructure. We went up through the desert north of Khartoum towards this little tiny village where Bin Laden's men were building a, a new road which, had which he'd constructed joining the village to the main highway between <coughs> Khartoum and Port Sudan and they were children were dancing and, and old men were explaining to him how grateful they were and the village headman was thanking Bin Laden. There Bin Laden sat in his white robe and uh, his red kufiya hat on and um, I saw Jamal go up to him and greet him and I saw Bin Laden looking over Jamal's shoulder at me he'd obviously say I brought this Ajnab Ajnabi with me. And Bin Laden was very, I won't say he was shy, he was very nervous about meeting me. Um, he'd not met a Western reporter before. And he clearly believed that I was going to ask him about terrorism, 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 terrorism. And in fact, what I was really interested to know from him was what it was like fighting the Russians. While in Sudan, Bin Laden remained politically active. For most of the 1990s, he maintained an office in London, named the Advisory and Reformation Committee. The office was believed to have been involved in distributing literature critical of the Saudi regime. Following bomb attacks in Riyadh and Khobar in Saudi Arabia, Sudan started to come under increasing pressure to expel its controversial guest. Investigators believed Bin Laden was tied at some level to both attacks. Somalia was where Bin Laden chose to open up his first front against the United States. In 1992, the Marines were sent there on a relief mission. Bin Laden provided arms and expertise to the Somalis. Soon after, American helicopters were shot down and Marines attacked and killed in the streets of Mogadishu. 
the Americans withdrew. Another superpower humiliated. Another Bin Laden victory. The pressure on Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir to expel Bin Laden intensified. As well as the Saudis and the Americans, the Egyptians added their voice. In 1995, an assassination attempt was made on Egyptian President Husni Mubarak in the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa. Bin Laden and his Egyptian allies were suspected of being behind the attack. It was thought that Bin Laden used his farm in Sudan as a training camp for Egyptian militants opposed to Mubarak. Perhaps to counter this allegation, Bin Laden accepted an interview request from a Cairo-based American journalist, Scott McLeod. The interview took place at Bin Laden's farm in Sudan. Well, I met him two times altogether. Uh, it was part of the same interview, though. I went to Khartoum in Sudan in uh, February, early February of 1996, and it was during the holy month of Ramadan. And I met Bin Laden at his office uh, in Khartoum. He had a construction company uh, called, I think, Al Hijra Construction Company. And I met him in his office as the manager's office in that building. Eventually, in 1996, Sudan succumbed to international pressure to expel Bin Laden. In May of that year, Bin Laden left. His land and investments in the country were appropriated by the government. The Sudan وأحياناً كان يكاتبها كان يكاتب رئيس الجمهورية فيما سمعت هذا سمع شهادة سمعية وكانوا يرسلون إليه بعض وسائط الأمن الخفية إلى بورسودان فيتسللون ليؤدوا إليه شيئاً زهيداً جداً لا يكاد تؤديه إلى صديق يعني فضلاً أن تؤديه إلى عشرات الملايين التي كانت ديناً على ظهورهم ولعلهم بعد ذلك <تصفيق> شعروا بأنه هو الآن في في همه وفي حصاره فيمكن أن يبلع الأموال ويسكت عليها والعياذ بالله يعني فحتى لما عملت اللقاء مع الشيخ أسامة بن لادن انتقد الحكومة السودانية وهاجمها بشدة حقيقة يعني وتحدث بمرارة عن أنهم كيف خذلوه وكيف خذلوا إنسان مسلم زيه وكيف أنه وثق فيهم ويعني واعتقد أنهم بقيموا دولة إسلامية حقيقية وفي الآخر يعني طعنوا في الظهر بن لادن still had friends in Afghanistan at the time in 1996 the country was under the presidency of Burhanuddin Rabbani. Allies of the Afghan president recognized that Bin Laden was in need of a new sanctuary. كما سمعت أنه لم نكن بالتفصيل كيف أرجع ولكن عن طريق بعض الإخوة الذين كانوا في الحزب الإسلامي لمولي محمد يونس خالص كانوا على صلة بهم وفي إحدى الأسفار الذين وفد منهم سافروا إلى السودان في زيارة والتقوا هناك ببعض الأشخاص منهم أسامة بن لادن فديك مثلا فديك الأغل الشهيدان أنهم أخلم دار كسانة شجوان ديدي أخلم أخلم زكاة ورطة مشكل بيه نشي فديك یاو مجاهد سه بود که ده از بسلامی یک متیار کماندان و ده انجینر محمود ده استاد سیاف کماندان و ده او بخیر ده ده مولیس خالص کماندان و ساز نور ده استاد سیاف کماندان و او زن نور کسان چه اگوی اوس جوان دیدی دا کسان تو لارل سودان تا پدی وقت که دستی معلومه ده چه در سودان دولت در زیاد دیدیم که فشار لندی چه باید بسامه لخبال خواهر نو وشاری یا ده چه ده امریکان ترسلیم که نو دوی چه لال الحال تا او بسامه سر ولی دل بسامه تو ده بلا نوار کرد چه تاس و راشه افغانستان تا